morning. Hello. We are here with Dr. Charles LaValle, our infectious disease specialist. His office is located in Cape Girardeau, but he also comes to Sykeston, our infusion center. So, um, welcome Dr. LaValle. Thank you. Just had a couple of questions that um, I think some of the public has been asking and we just kind of wanted to get a specialist opinion on some of those. Sure. So, today, what is COVID? So, COVID is a coronavirus. They call it a novel coronavirus because it's new uh, in humans, basically. It's probably been around in animals for a long time, but it's new because it jumped from animals to humans. Oh, okay. So that a big part of why it's potentially causing so many problems and it's because our immune systems haven't seen it yet. So okay. that's why it's a novel coronavirus. That's why it's causing a lot of problems and jump from animals to humans. Okay, so that kind of brings up another question someone asked is, can our pets transfer it to us since it was once an animal and now passed to humans? So animals can get this COVID-19, mm -hmm. but as far as that being a common mode of people getting it, I don't believe that's gonna be a big big factor. Okay. I did read somewhere interestingly where dogs don't necessarily get coronavirus, but cats definitely can. Oh, so kind of yeah. interesting. That is neat. Um, <clears throat> so do you think we've peaked in this area? So Scott County, I know we have about 51 cases right now. Cape Girardeau County has a little less, but so do you think that's something that we've peaked at or are we still going toward that? So it's, it's still not totally clear, but it does look like we're right at the peak, either right before, it, right after it, somewhere right in there, but it's it's really impossible to say for certain, mm -hmm. but we're, we're right around there for sure. Okay, um, one of the other questions was the difference in wearing gloves and not wearing gloves and shopping or going out in public. Is that something that we need to do or not need to do? So <clears throat> gloves and frequent hand washing really do the same thing. So it's, um, if you're wearing gloves that could potentially give you false security because if you touch your face with gloves on, then that's the same as not having, you know, gloves, not having gloves on. Yeah. So either way, gloves or no gloves, you should still be using the hand sanitizer, you know, frequently. Good. Um, so the CDC says that we should stay six feet or less from a person for a prolonged time. So they don't really specify what that prolonged length of time is. Do you have any suggestions on that or ideas? So you see the little cartoons where all the the uh, materials coming out of people's mouths. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really the closer you are and the more things, the more they're putting out, the more um, chance you have of infection. Mm -hmm. So say if you're a respiratory therapist or a nurse and you're you know, a foot from somebody's mouth, I mean, and they're coughing, that's high risk. Sure. Versus say two people work together and they're you know, four feet away um, and not necessarily right in each other's face, that's a lot lower risk. Mm -hmm. So it really, um, it really varies on how close they are and if they have symptoms for the most part. Okay, good. Um, when do you think that our community or Scott County or Missouri and the United States will be able to return back to work? I, mean, I think that's somewhat in the process right now. Mm -hmm. um, and do you I think, think that's uh, a safe thing to do right now or is it so, Are we a little early? I mean, I think that they definitely should not just say, okay, it's back to normal. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely, and I think that's the plan to be in steps, like the, um, the most essential businesses, mm -hmm. and then a next step after that and after that. So as far as like full stadiums of people, you know, right beside each other for sports, and that's going to be probably, those will be the last things to kind of get back to normal. Yeah. So that's going to be definitely down the road. I mean, I'm guessing probably months. Mm -hmm. But as far as some businesses open, I mean, that's, we're looking next week or two. So it yeah. varies on what the scenario is. Okay. Um, so we've seen articles about people who test positive for the virus and they're still being a carrier, you know, or they're negative for the virus and they've stopped having symptoms. Are there, is there truth to this where the people are positive, but they're still a carrier for sim of symptoms of the COVID? So, um, you, you see that like the bell-shaped curve um, where how long people test positive uh, and on the end of that like you're talking about after they recover some people are way out on the end of that curve so it's potential that somebody could potentially um, still test positive for the virus you know two or three weeks later mm -hmm. but that's that's pretty rare you know most people are going to be you know 
what they're saying as far as the 14 days. Right, so about uh, but, 14 but days. But rarely then. people could shed virus longer. Mm -hmm. The other thing with those studies, they're testing to see if they just have uh, remnants of the virus. It doesn't tell us if it's actually live virus or virus that can infect other people. Right, because we just don't have good testing right now. Right, I mean, they, there's, they're not they're not virus cultures. They're not growing the virus. They're doing the swab, which is test for basically pieces of the virus. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know if it's actual virus that can infect other people or not. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about the difference between like the nasal swab and the blood test for the lay sure. person? So, I mean, mm -hmm. we know that the swab is given us a molecular testing, but right. then the, the blood test that people keep talking about, that's more of a IgG and IgM right, testing. So right. can you explain the difference with those? Yeah, so the PCR, the, the swab, it just tests for pieces of that virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that means you have at least uh, live virus or uh, particles of the virus still in your system. Mm -hmm. So that means basically you have it now. So the blood test tests for exposure to the virus, basically. The IgM means recent exposure mm -hmm. within 10 days to two or three weeks, four weeks. And then the IgG just means you've been exposed to it before. It could have been you know, three years ago or whatever. So it's uh, that's how the blood test works. It, and it'll be important as far as telling us who's likely to be immune to it, who's already had it. Mm -hmm. So that's where the blood test will be helpful. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could have those tests. And, uh, and those, they're, they're gonna be here, I think, hopefully pretty soon now, within the next mm -hmm. couple weeks, I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, when are people no longer considered carriers? We kind of talked about that. So basically after, I mean, I think the CDC says 72 hours after a fever, no symptoms, and um, it's been about seven days. Is yeah, so, kind of so uh, that's a big question. When can you uh, take people out of isolation? Mm -hmm. So there's a test-based method and non-test-based method. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have readily available tests, that's the method they use. Mm -hmm. The CDC recommends uh, seven days since symptom onset, 72 hours without fever, mm -hmm. without uh, Tylenol. Mm -hmm. And um, so they say uh, improvement in respiratory symptoms. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are saying like resolution of respiratory symptoms. Right. So, and then what we've used in CAPE, we've talked about like significant improvement in respiratory systems, so symptoms. So there's a little bit of, um, you know, uh, interpretation of, of exactly what that means, but but that's the not if you don't have tests. Mm -hmm. So if you do have tests, it's basically two of the swabs that are negative, like 24 hours apart, mm -hmm. then you're considered, uh, you know, you can so, you can come out of isolation. Yeah, and I think, unfortunately, we just don't have those testing available that, that readily, so we can't do those two right, negatives. Right. So that's been a little bit of so an it's issue. different, yeah, if it takes six days or whatever to come back. But if, mm -hmm. if you could get it back that day, that would definitely be the, the right. way to go. Um, so what about the estimation on a vaccine? Do we have a time estimation when we're gonna see that or? I mean, just based on all vaccines and how what it takes to produce a vaccine, I mean, I'd say at the very soonest, it would be probably six months, but probably more like a year would be, would be my guess. Mm. It's gonna be not anything, I don't believe, before six months. And so as far as looking at COVID, do you feel like it's gonna be something that's seasonal or is this something that, you know, we're gonna continue to see? like the flu or is this going to be something that is here gone and then we don't see it again that i don't think we really know i mean obviously the flu comes back every year a different you know variation of the strain but uh, so sars in in 2002 which was a coronavirus mm -hmm. it ran its course in less than a year and it was just gone mm -hmm. mers which was another coronavirus um, a few years ago it um, it for the most part went away but still not completely gone, like it pops up sporadically every now and then still. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say, I mean, my guess would be probably for several months, it's gonna be you know, a big issue. And then hopefully there'll be a, back, a vaccine to help kind of get, you know, get rid of it as a, as a problem. Okay. Um, what do you feel um, the reinfection rate, once you've recovered, do you feel like there's gonna be a reinfection to this or you think the person is kind of immune to it after they I mean most almost all respiratory viruses once you get it you have immunity for at least a few months okay. I have seen some uh, I guess reports from South Korea where people were you know cured but then came back with symptoms and the virus again so I'm not sure what that means if it's like they 
weren't really over it necessarily, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of got worse again later. That would be my guess. I don't because I'm thinking, and it, you know, most respiratory viruses once you kind of get over, you have immunity for at least you know a few months after that. Okay. So I don't think that's going to be a big issue. Mm -hmm. Do you think the temperature and the um, the heat that we're about to experience with summer is that going to reduce the spread of it, or is that going to I mean, that could potentially help just because, I mean, almost all viruses die pretty quick, like outside in UV light, because UV light, like we use in the hospital to sanitize. So, it, like outside, it dies pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, that you're still going to spread it inside. You know, it's not going to totally get rid of it, but it could potentially help. So. It. Um, so, what's the best way to protect your family when you come home from either work or shopping? And I know it's probably going to be different for like the healthcare workers because they need to do a lot more precautions mm. than just an individual. But an individual that's out shopping for the day, how do they prevent that infection from spreading to their family if they come in contact with it? So, I mean, the main thing is, is definitely hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, people, if they have access to it, should take it with them, like when they go in the store, mm -hmm. keep it in their car. Uh, so, you know, when you're touching things in stores and places like that, you can use the hand sanitizer because mm -hmm. that's really the, the main way to, to prevent from, say, bringing it home from the store. So when right. they're touching things and then touching their face and right, right. getting it in there. Yeah, I mean, really, like when you're out in places like that, to really be cautious, you should, you should use the hand sanitizer after you're touching, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. you know, before you touch your face, which inevitably you will at some point touch your face. Absolutely, but. everybody <clears> does. <throat> Um, one of the questions I thought was interesting was, um, are we going to be able to bridge the gap in false negatives? Because right now, from what the studies are showing, that we have about a 30% um, false negative rate. So yeah, so there was gonna... a study in China where it was 30%, but mm -hmm. from what I've heard from the experts in the U.S., they really don't think it's definitely that not much. that high. Oh, okay, good. Uh, but still the thing is, like, if there's a patient that we really think has coronavirus, just mm -hmm. clinical, the clinical picture, um, even if you get a negative, the, the options you can test again, um, and I think I would feel pretty good about having two negative tests. Mm -hmm. okay. But just one negative test, if you really think they have coronavirus, you should probably test again. So it's still a clinical judgment with the physician. And the to some extent, yeah. Because yeah. no, you know, no test is 100 percent. This one's probably better than 70 percent, but it's definitely not 100 percent. Okay. So I guess the last one, it was kind of a funny one, but um, I think us women think about it more than most of the men because they take a shower and they just wash their hair. But So what about women and washing their hair daily? Um, so my uh, take on this would be if you're doing something like intubating a patient or you know a respiratory therapist where you're really like in a patient's face mm -hmm. uh, and potentially have those droplets in your hair, I mean, that's... Uh, then that's probably a, a good idea to you know to wash your hair daily. But other but than that, if we're just other, shopping, we yeah, can just no, that should uh, <laughs> we can still not wash your hair daily. I think that would be fine. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much for coming right. out and no answering some of our questions. And I know the public is really interested in hearing some of these things, so I appreciate you coming. All right, out. no problem.